Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions, the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, news, sports, lifestyle, everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miotis. On social media, you know me as Petey Beats. You'll recognize my guest from a show on HBO called The Undoing. We're with Michael Devine. Mike, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Hey, Pete. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. I mean, it's uh, a really interesting story about you. I mean... Um, for a lot of people that see other interviews you've done and kind of see, you started as a police officer. You weren't an actor right away. You were a police officer. That's a kind of interesting trans transition and shift. Well, I was, it, 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 I started out as an actor. I was one of those people that, uh, you know, I was doing the school plays and the community theaters. And then I, I was very serious about focusing on it professionally, an actor. And so I went to college for it. I, I went to Montclair State. I got a BFA in acting. And then a few years out of the gate, something just happened in me. My, uh, my father was a, a federal agent and my grandfather was a detective. And uh, even though no one pushed me in, in this direction at all, I mean, my brother was a cop. I, uh, I, I followed in my family's footsteps and I, I joined the NYPD in 1998. And so it was a few years into being a cop, uh, it was around two well, it was uh, around 2001, where a lot of us kind of realized how fleeting our lives were and how precious, well, I should say, how precious our lives were and how fleeting time is. So that's when I returned to acting. I wanted to, uh, you know, if I have a limited time here on earth, I want to do everything possible. So that's when I, I decided to, to, to merge them all together. And it's one of those things too, where I think like I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about like what actually acting is. I mean, it's pretty much playing pretend for a living. Like that's basically what you guys are doing. <laughs> yeah. It's yes and no. It's, you know, it's interesting. And, and I know we're going to get into this, but um, I learned a ton of things from Nicole Kidman and here I go name dropping already. But it, it is Nicole Kidman. But, you have to, man. I have to, and I know we're gonna we're, we're gonna into that. But there was something that I uh, of the many things I learned from her. Someone once told her, "I could never do what you do because I couldn't lie for a living." And her response was, "It's just the opposite, actually, because you have to live in your own truth. You have to be so truthful and believe it so much that if if, every, if you were to think that you're lying all the time, your performance is ultimately inauthentic." But you're right; it's pretending. It's pretending for a living. Absolutely. And it's pretty crazy because I remember specifically a lot of TV shows get put put out there. There's a lot, but there's a lot of trailers. I remember they put a teaser out for this show, The Undoing, where it didn't really tell you much. It just kind of showed, you know, Hugh Grant walking out. There's a scandal. You know what I mean? That's all you need to know at the time, right? All by and design. It, <laughs> and it's just kind of like everyone was talking about it. Like, I remember, like, literally talking to my mom about it. I remember talking about it. Like, what is this? You know what I mean? And now they're kind of watching the show. But do you do you agree the kind of unveil and the teaser that gave us a little bit of a taste? That was pretty kind of interesting how they kind of presented it in the beginning. It gave you a taste. But as you know, all by design, it gave away nothing of the plot. Nothing. I remember reading a couple of comments saying, okay, this looks good, but what is it about? Yeah. And and so much of it, uh, it uh, even we were told early on, don't even talk about the plot or it's a whodunit. If there's a victim, who the victim is until it starts to to be, be released week to week. But it's one of those things, too, where this is also um, like you kind of you, you kind of want that. But you definitely like I said in the beginning, Mike, like, you know, there's a scandal. Something's wrong. He you know, there's something. a scandal. Yeah, something's wrong. And if you notice, each of the trailers revealed just a little bit more. Absolutely. Um, talk a little bit about your character, what we can expect with your character in the show, Mike. Well, as we all know by now, it's a whodunit. Yeah. So I'm basically one of the two detectives uh, from the NYPD assigned to investigate the murder. Wow. And I don't know, are we are we giving away spoilers? Can I even talk about who talk the murder a little bit. Is? I, I know. So there's <laughs> there's been a brutal murder and, and Edgar Ramirez, who who uh, plays my partner, I play his partner, um, he plays Joe Mendoza. So the two of us have been assigned to investigate this murder. Yeah, absolutely. What was it like kind of working with Edgar on this kind of like a tag team a little bit? It was awesome. And we we did get a little bit of time so we could kind of get to know each other. We had dinner, we actually went to a, a precinct. I was still in the NYPD at the time, so I just took him to the 23rd Precinct Detective Squad. 
which is the squad that we were assigned to in the in the in the series. So we got to sit down with some real detectives, and uh, um, so we got in doing that. We we all got to you know learn some interrogation techniques and also meet some some great cops. But I also got to know Edgar a bit. So hopefully that did translate on screen because we did we did become friends. He's a really good guy. We text all the time. I kind of I I, I can't even imagine like even not even not even like I'm not even talking about shows where you play a cop or a detective but like any show or like movie that you're on in the future where you're like where there's other characters that are cops i have a feeling like everyone is gonna know that you were in the nypd and be like mike come here like am i saying it right <laughs> yeah i have an identity crisis i get i get uh, questions on like uh, the law about uh, about acting about how do I, how do i become a cop how do i become an actor I, but hey, I'm I'm open to it all. But I'm also saying too, though, like if like you're like there's a young actor who comes up to you, he's like, hey, like I have to play a cop in this scene. Like, would you say this? Would you say that? Like, I'm wondering if there's ever like like because they know like if 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 they get to know you, you're gonna say your background a police officer. Like, I find that's a funny dynamic a little bit. Yeah, and and even like Edgar was saying, you know, would you do this? Would you do that? And he was he was um as much as I was gleaning from him as an actor, he was um, also re you know um gleaning information from me about becoming a cop. So he would say, was would you do it this way? Would you do it that way? You know, little things like a detective would wear his suit jacket open so he can reach his gun if he ever needed to. Absolutely. Um, so there's just little things like that. And, and he, he really wanted to make it authentic. So there's an example of someone that would come up to me and say, you know, would this happen, would that, would that happen? Oh, absolutely. Has it, has it sunk in that you were on a show that is on HBO? I mean, HBO is kind of like, like, the, the, like, it, it, like I remember like HBO out, came out right away with like Six Feet Under, The Sopranos, just with yeah. nonstop kind of content. And you're on that never. What's that like being part of the HBO family a little, Mike? It, it, it took a long time to absorb just because yeah. I was – a year ago when we shot it, I was thrown into it. And I'm like, oh, this is this is not only – not only is it an HBO show, but it's a David E. Kelly show. So there were – it was incremental um, levels of absorption, you know. And, and I'm still trying to uh, – to fathom it, but it was it was around the time that the Undoing was coming out, where I, you know, we got a, uh, you know, an opening night gift in the mail from uh, from uh, HBO, and and I got notes from HBO at every now and then. So I really did feel like part of the family, but it's still it's still sinking in, and and the fact that the show, I think by this point, it's you can comfortably call it a hit. So that's another thing. I was, you know, there's so many stages of. Um, you know, of, of acceptance, I guess you'd say, and and now because I've done and I've seen big things where you know this you you it has all the ingredients of you know a, of a hit, and then it just flops and and or you know if we were to release we were originally going to release it uh, in May, so had it been released in May, it would may have just gotten forgotten. But to answer your question more succinctly, uh, it it's it is finally sinking in, and and uh, and and each each level of the. Uh, I guess of its success because it, it has done very well. They're they're comparing the uh, the finale and the, and the ratings to Game of Thrones, which is insane. But I mean, it's it's one of those things too where you read about a show that's coming out of Who Done It, like you said, and you see, I mean, Nicole Kim and Hugh Grant. I mean, it's kind of one of those like, you know, like I've ever seen those memes like "Shut Up and Take My Money" type thing. I've ever seen. Yeah, that. it's like it's almost like one of those like I'm sold. You know what I mean? I feel like it's like like that wall, like the Marvel and DC. Um, projects that are coming out too, right? We're like the deadline, the big like kind of like release of who's going to be in it. You're just like, okay, cool, sold. Yeah, haven't seen a trailer. I would, <laughs> if I wasn't in it, I would have been home watching every week. Absolutely. Here's a question. I'm wondering if no is the answer to this question because I, it might be no because it might uh, like so. You play a detective in this show, right? Correct. And you were a police officer um, in the past as well, and you know real life, you know, actor life, but you actually played a cop, you were a cop <laughs> in real life, right? Do you think you being, like, do they know, like when you audition and they interview, like, do they know you were a cop? Does that come into a play? Do they, do you think you maybe got the part because you were a cop and like they like the detective? Like, I'm just curious if that kind of had any kind of thing to do with it. Do you know what I mean? I think that did help. And I honestly don't know if, if my, uh, my agent told them before I entered the room. Gotcha. But, um, you know, I, at the time I was working in the chief of detectives office. I spent 12 years in the detective bureau as a detective sergeant. Mm -hmm. So I, I left work and went right to the audition wearing exactly what I would have worn. I had the, you know, the detective bureau pin on my lapel and I took a uh, 
We use these detective bureau notebooks. So I, I threw my lines into that. So it's for, I was reading for a detective. I gave them what I knew to be a detective. And I remember them saying, and I did tell them in the audition, um, I, I, you know, I, I said, I don't know if you guys knew, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a detective sergeant. And uh, I don't, I think, I don't know if they, you know, were learning for the first time there, but I definitely think it helped me. And I remember them telling me that the tone of the series was very realistic. It was not very theatrical. In fact, at the audition, I, I made some kind of gesture like this. It was one of the interrogation scenes. And she's like, nope, that's reserved. This pointing is reserved for network TV. This is HBO where it's a little more realistic. So I gave them a very realistic performance. And I also thought it gave me an edge, um, them knowing, you know, that, that I brought that to the table. So, yeah, I, I, I think it helped. Absolutely. No, it's, 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 it's really interesting. I mean, have you ever thought about kind of learning experiences specifically with the undoing? I mean, you know, there's going to be a learning, like in life, you know, whether you're acting, whether you're just kind of like working a nine to five job in an office, there's always going to be kind of like learning experiences for you specifically. What were some learning experiences for Michael Devine working on the undoing? There was a lot that I learned directly from Nicole Kidman. Um, and mainly because a lot of those, a lot of, you know, I've, I've worked with some really big names, but I've never had the material where we can go so intensely and so emotionally. And there were a couple things that I learned from her as an actor, and I thought this was fascinating. And I don't know if she's, if she even does this intentionally, but the, uh, you have to adjust the performance to the distance of the camera. And I don't know if a lot of people even realize that, but if, if you're acting for a wide shot, your performance like I'm right now, I can gesture and my performance can be the tiniest bit bigger. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and then the camera moves in and then it, you kind of split the difference and then the camera moves, as you saw, super, super close in a lot of these scenes. So I watched um, Nicole go from the, the, the larger performance and then it's, I'm specifically talking about, like, say, the interrogations where she had to break down and cry. Yeah. She reserved, and we did that same scene, the exact same dialogue, maybe 10 times. And she delivered a performance for this distance of the camera. But she reserved the tears. She kept that. And, and each time she went deeper and deeper emotionally. And then when the camera was that close, that's when she she let herself go emotionally. So she, she was... Wow. Yeah, and it was to me that was amazing to watch. And there's so much from a practical and emotional perspective how you can uh, reach that level. And uh, it was it was fascinating to watch. But then just also little things. There was, you know, that that's one thing in particular. But she was so giving as an actor. Yeah, and and sure. I, I always am too. But if you know, regardless of what stage I would ever reach. There were times. There's a very, just a very little scene. I think back to where um, we're we're tearing the apartment apart, and I have very little to do. I think I hand um, Mendoza the search warrant, but they shot that from a various perspectives, and one was from Grace's perspective, and I had to hand her the the search warrant. She didn't even need to be in the room. She could have been taking a break, but she she made sure Nicole made sure that she was behind the camera, and she gave a little wave so I can see her eye line. And, and realistically, on set, they could put a piece of tape on the bezel of the camera, and I could just look at that. But she made certain that she was there to give me something to act opposite, even though she's behind the camera. So it was it, – it, I've learned so much from her, but just just from all levels. But those – to answer your question again, it's, those are, are two very practical things I learned. One is just how important it is to, to, to give as an actor, and then, and then the other – the practical – aspects absolutely do you think people realize how much auditioning an actor does in in like as the job like i don't think people like that's the job if you think about it like you're auditioning all the time yeah and then you work like you know three months here a couple weeks here but then you're back to auditioning like i don't think people realize how much auditioning you guys actually do right and when you i've heard them the casting directors break down the numbers and it's it will blow your mind and it also you realize just how lucky we can be sometimes or just to even get you know well if they get the breakdowns and then they send them they send out you know a list of characters yep. to to every agent in town they'll submit hundreds of actors they'll whittle that down to a hundred if i'm just just one example of numbers they'll bring in say 30 20 depending on the casting director 
and then they'll whittle it down again. If they have callbacks, they'll whittle that down again to three or four or five, and then to get the part. But it's staggering, and it's amazing how we, we even book jobs. And, and um, uh, that's one of the reasons I, I did not want to do pursue acting as a career. I thought it was too unstable. I yep. really wanted some stability in my life. I wanted to eventually raise a family and then pay a mortgage. So I uh, that's why I didn't get into acting. And, and now that uh, I have a pension, thankfully – I can I can now pursue acting full time without having to worry about those six months where I, I, I haven't booked a job. Well, it's funny because like I I gotta share the story with you very quickly. I mean, it's one of those things where I don't like I don't like I'm not gonna name who it was, but I'm with my friend who's an actor in Toronto one day, and this was like five like four or five years like years ago, right? We're at a coffee shop. He's an actor, right? And he's telling me basically, yeah, you know, I went like. I forget what the term is. What the, what's the term when you read like when it when it's down to like you or two or three people? The callback. The callback. Yeah. Um. And then like you read with the director <clears throat> on the callback too. Sometimes. Yeah. So uh, usually not with the director, but a reader. Well, what's it called when it's like down to two people? When you test testing, well, uh, there could be a screen test depending on him. If if you're uh, usually that's for the big. It, stars, so he had a screen, screen test. test anyway. It was between him and Johnny Boyega for Star Wars. And okay. then what we're oh, then yeah. I mean, can you know, you know what I mean? I, like, it's just like we're just sitting at like a restaurant. Like, yeah, I was almost in Star Wars. I mean, it's just like, yeah, yeah. it's just it, crazy. It yeah, and and he'll have to, he'll have to live with that. Yeah, I've got a friend, a uh, really good guy, and and I probably shouldn't name names, but it was down between him and another person for what became an extremely successful uh, sitcom that ran for years. Yeah, and 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 Joe was still, you know, he's tending bar waiting for the next job, but he came this close. He was number two to what would have been a career launching major sitcom, which crazy, ran, yeah. which ran for years. And I, and I remember seeing like the yeah. bus ads, I, it must've killed him, you know? And, and <laughs> thankfully I always, if I didn't get a part, I'm like, okay, well I got my day job, but um, it's, it's such a, the, the business of, of um, acting is such a roller coaster. It's, 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 it will make you, your head spin. So you you stay day job. Are you still a police officer? No, I retired a few months ago. Okay. August thirty first of this year, I, I retired. I I uh, it was I concluded twenty two years to the day. Oh, yeah. Wasn't uh, yeah. So a couple of months ago, you retired. Yeah, September first was my first day. Uh, that wasn't yeah, that long so, ago. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm still I'm still adjusting. It was nice. We had a a major snowstorm today, and I'm thinking I don't have to go into work. <laughs> and I had to shovel. I've been shoveling all day, but but um. It's. I'm still. I'm readjusting and and uh, decompressing still. Uh, now I do need to ask this. Okay, the kind of, the, kind of st the whole thing about the. I don't know if stereotypes there. The, the do, cops and donuts. Do cops eat a lot of donuts? Like, can you approve that, or is that kind of blown way out of proportion in pop culture? It's it's blown out of proportion. Okay. But and and what's <laughs> even worse is that you, especially in New York. You're in, you're in the public eye so much that if you're seen eating a donut, it's over. So you can't you can't feed that. Say it no, it, but yeah, Sorry, you you, you, you just can't. But hey, uh, but the the food is plentiful. We I'm interviewed trying to lose that we way. interviewed Larry Hankin, who's been in Seinfeld and Billy Madison, and he has that scene in Home Alone where he's like the, the he's the he's the cop on the phone and he's eating the donut and the donut like falls on his thing. And he said, Yeah, he's like, they want to know if I wanted a prop. I'm like, a prop. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm a cop. Like, <laughs> give me a donut. <laughs> why why not? It's it, it's really great. No, that that's interesting. It's true. I didn't think about eating the public eye. It's true, the, eating the donut. Because, but like that is really in pop culture, though. Like donuts, like Simpsons is a big part of that too. Oh like, sure, like donuts and cops. Yeah, and nowadays, honestly, we've been called everything. The co the donut thing. We that's that's nothing. We. I, <laughs> oh, I wasn't. Say, I don't thing. even think it's a yeah. bad thing. I just associate. Nah cops with donuts a lot because of like so, like i just think of that i just think of like a briefing and they're just taking a glazed donut like while they're working on a case <laughs> it, I'm not, it it happens but i don't think any more than any other industry uh, yeah but but we're also so so cognizant of it that every time you you are but like i said in the public you would you would never eat a donut in public you'll never hear the end of it <laughs> then they'll be taking pictures of you and, no. oh my God. and also from yeah. a practical standpoint you yeah. can't if we wore dark blue uniforms, you can't eat a, a donut in a dark blue uniform. Yeah. You're wearing that all day. This became a really like 
deep conversation about cops and donuts. <laughs> and I, I enjoy it. My viewers questions. are going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been asked much, much more <laughs> provocative questions. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turner for a little bit. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Pete. I appreciate um, and it. And it's funny it's because pleasure. people don't realize, like, they're just watching it, but, you know, they don't know because it's pre recorded, you know, like, technical difficulties to get this interview done for everyone. Was <laughs> this was a rough one for us. Yeah, but we made it happen. Absolutely. So people can watch The Undoing on HBO. They can catch you in The Undoing on HBO. Yep. That's and then all episodes are available now, so you can stream it and binge it all day if you want. Absolutely. And where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? I'm on Twitter, it's at Michael Devine, D E V I N E, and yeah. I'm on Instagram at Michael P. Devine. Amazing. Well, seriously, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Um, congrats for the success with the undoing on HBO. Thanks, man. Appreciate and, it. And uh, let's virtually go eat a donut together or something. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I am craving a donut. I, <laughs> Okay, I'm a civilian now. I'll eat as many donuts as I want. It's true. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Michael Devine and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.